Wow, look at all that oil. So Vladimir, you feel good? Very good, I'm very, very good for my health. I feel very vulnerable because I'm completely naked, so... It looks like chocolate, but you can see it's like running in streaks. I was in the town of Naftala, in Azerbaijan. I've been led here by that police van. They stopped and called their friend in Poland who spoke English so that they could help me. It might not look special at first glance, but the region is infamous for its alternative medical therapies. The most popular of which is a bath in crude oil. But to understand how on earth this is a thing, it helps to know a little bit about the country. Salam, salam. So many people selling pomegranates and stuff here. Azerbaijan is a nation with so much oil and natural gas that it spews out of the countryside. I once cycled past a puddle of water that was on fire. That is very strange. That water is on fire. I got chased by this friendly dog though, so I couldn't stop for long. <laughs> and a hillside near Baku, called Yanardag, has been burning since the 1950s. So I guess it's not surprising that Azerbaijan has earned the nickname, the Land of Fire. I cycled for hundreds of kilometers on a dead straight road through an empty, flat desert for days. This is day four of cycling through uh, this kind of scenery. There's like no points of reference, so it's really difficult to know how fast you're going or how far away things are. I'm just slowly going more and more insane. That is the most cheerful version of Haider Aliyev I've seen so far. And aside from the looming portraits of Haider Aliyev, the country's former president and father of the current president. Ah, there's Haider Aliyev again. The nodding donkeys pumping oil were sometimes the only features that stood out. This country is so rich in fossil fuels. So many people work in the oil industry. You have this place called Neft Dazlari, which basically translates as oil rock. And that is a uh, town built on oil rigs out in the Caspian Sea. Uh, you can't visit there, unfortunately. I actually emailed the president of Sokar, the state-run oil uh, company, to see if I could. Coming to Baku, I've met so many people who are studying oil engineering or engineering at the Academy of oil and natural gas or something. You have the medical treatments like Naftalan oil baths. Oh, the whole country just has um, a close relationship with oil and gas. And that goes for the culture as well as the economy. So when I heard that there was an entire town full of clinics where people could bathe in crude oil, I had to see it for myself. So I've just woken up in my room here at the spa. Now I'm going to go off and have a look around, hopefully meet up with the owners and the doctors here, but I'm not sure if anyone speaks English, so I might have to improvise a little bit. My first meeting was with Elias, a dermatologist and urologist. And uh, you are a uro urologist? Uro no, no, I am. But urology, right? Urology and dermatologist. My name is Elias, I am a doctor. I am working in Lafta. He wasn't particularly talkative. Liver, rain, prostate. But I put that down to the language barrier as he took me through the raised walkways between the buildings. You don't have to go outside to get around here. It's built that way because after an oil bath, according to Elias, you're not allowed to let your skin get cold for 24 hours. Otherwise you risk some damage to your body. Wow. This is very cool. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yes. This is Vlad. Wow, this is... Uh, look at all that oil. He travelled all the way from Murmansk in Russia to bathe here, 
and was hoping that it would be good for his bones and skin. So, uh, how does it feel? It feels good? Very good. Very good, very, very good. good. Very good for uh, osteo. Ah, for the bones. The best. If people have a problem with skin, yep. it's good too. Uh, but uh, the best for osteo. Arthrosis, okay, okay. rheumatism, osteochondrosis. Okay. Skin is good too. Uh, first, my visit to Azerbaijan. Yes, I think, oh, uh, difficult country, yeah. uh, maybe uh, trouble. No, very yeah. kindly, very yeah. uh, really friend, uh, friendly, and uh, very good for my health. Remember him, because he'll come back later. The owner of the spa, Ilkan, had agreed to meet me. He told me that Naftalan Oil's medicinal properties were discovered by travellers. The story goes that when they passed through the region, they had to leave an injured camel behind. But when they came back the other way, the camel had somehow healed after taking a dip in a pool of the oil. Like everyone else here, he claimed it could treat up to 72 different conditions, ranging from fertility problems to eczema. A phone rang and the meeting was over, but Ilkan had decided it was time for me to try one of the baths out for myself. Right now, we are going to the oil bath. Yep, that's right. I'm going to try an oil bath. So, let's go. <laughs> so, we're in the facility with the bars, and I can already smell the naftalan, the oil. It's got quite a strong smell. I had a quick checkup from a cardiologist to make sure I was healthy enough to do it, and was given the all clear. It's a necessary step because those with heart conditions aren't supposed to have the treatment. I tried not to think about the fact that this oil is reused, meaning countless people had probably already bathed in the same stuff I was about to cover myself in. If I had to describe this, it, is, it feels like I've gotten into a tub of warm, melted chocolate that's just over body temperature. It looks like chocolate. <laughs> You're not really supposed to spend more than about 10 minutes in here because it can apparently be kind of bad for your heart. There's a little timer on the side here, which is going to let me know when I'm supposed to get out. After this, Royale, the guy who works here, is going to scrape my body, I think. Uh, he's going to scrape my body to get rid of the oil. But you can see it's like running in streaks down my, my arm and stuff. There's like different patches of colour. I'll have to edit this bit out, I think. <laughs> I feel very vulnerable because I'm completely naked, so... Uh, if you are going to do this, you have to be completely comfortable being uh, naked in front of total strangers. Um, because, thanks, <laughs> because they do have to uh, scrape down your naked body um, and you get to know each other quite well, I think. After being scrubbed down by Royale, the assistant, in one of the most awkward encounters of my life, my treatment was over. I told you Vlad would be back. He'd said he had something to show me, and that I should accompany him early one morning to a neighbouring clinic. It was there that I witnessed another, somehow even more strange, medical therapy. A strap was attached to his shoulders and another to his waist. Looks comfortable. <laughs> Before a nurse told him to lie down on a platform in the middle of a warm bath. Of water this time, not oil. He told me he was hoping to treat his back problems. From what I understood, the vertebrae in his spine were compressed. This possible. Right. Ah, okay, so it pulls the vertebrae apart. So the shoulder strap was held in place at one end, but at the other, I watched dumbstruck as weights were added to a cable attached to his waist harness, and the treatment began. My goodness. So right now, you're being stretched by the weights on here. For the next 20 minutes, his spine was stretched in what seemed to me like some kind of medieval torture method. 
Vladimir has some medium sized weights on here. You also have some small ones here, but for really intensive treatment, you have these enormous ones. And I cannot imagine that that would be a pleasant feeling. Vladimir, have you done this before? Third time. And more and more. With each treatment, more weight is used to stretch his back. So Vladimir, do you feel good? <laughs> like a... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Great. It's safe to say Naftalan is one of the most peculiar places I've ever been. But I left feeling a bit conflicted. During my stay, I met experts who explained the difference between certain dilutions of the oil and how they can be used. This one on the right supposedly balances hormone levels. But it all sounded a bit far-fetched. Elias had mentioned that the treatments are so successful here that there's an entire museum of crutches that patients no longer needed after their visits. One of many very bold claims I'd hear during my stay. And that seemed like a bit of a red flag. So on the one hand, it was one hell of an experience that I will never forget. But on the other, there was the sense that some might be taking advantage of people's lack of scientific knowledge with patients visiting from far and wide to treat conditions for which there is, in some cases, no known cure. And there's actually a chance that the therapies could be harmful. I didn't find much about the stretching rack that Vlad used, but there is some research that suggests the oil baths are carcinogenic, meaning they increase your risk of developing cancer. But all the patients I met seemed to be in good spirits, and to them, these treatments made a difference. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Spasiba, thank you for all the help. I've been following Vladimir as he's had his strange, strange, uncomfortable looking uh, treatments. And how do you feel, Vladimir? Yes, thank you very much for our meeting. And I am happy. How is your, your back? <laughs> yes. Your back is good? <laughs> yes. Is good? yes, very good. Good, very good, yes. good to hear. Yes. When we finally said goodbye, Vladimir certainly had a spring in his step.